demo. All right. Let's take some of the stuff out. Tool kit probably here. Pedals. The rock for the wheel axle. Welcome to another episode of JB360. We have here the VeloWave Ranger 2.0 Step Through Edition. And uh, this is a really nice bike. It's actually um, pretty bigger than I anticipated. Uh, it is running these 26 inch tires on both the front and the rear. And it has obviously a nice step through design here. We have a 750 watt motor running on the back here. We have a 48 volt, 15 amp hour uh, pack over here, which is actually uh, retrofitted inside the frame, the down tube over here. Gives it like a really nice stealth look. Uh, obviously you have the key lock here. Uh, to actually unlatch the battery, you have this little uh, dial switch here, which is nice. And uh, yeah, it's really, really, really uh, sleek, you know, in terms of battery placement. Uh, your charging port is over here. And this is actually running a uh, torque sensor uh, for the pedal sensor uh, here. So you are generating your own power when pedaling. Also, uh, with the bike, as you can see here, we have a nice little uh, rear rack uh, where you can add loads of accessories here, whether it be like a, you know, like a crate or some kind of storage bag in the back, or if you wanted to put an extra seat over here with like a passenger, you know, backrest over here and stuff like that uh definitely doable with the uh the added storage um extension over here as we make our way over to the cockpit or the dash uh we have actually our thumb throttle on the left side uh, which is usually uh, a bit different than when we usually have it on the right side uh, usually your shifter will be here and your throttle will be here but the shifter is actually on the right side so our thumb throttle is over here on the left uh, we have our little display here with the uh, modes uh, to cycle through here uh, we got mode mode zero would just be walking mode but you have five pedal assist modes listed over here and you can cycle through them with the plus and minus and if you hold down the plus sign you get your headlight over here it's not really much to brag about uh, I think it's definitely not gonna be useful for like trail riding at night or anything like that but it is uh, it is a good uh, light to be seen uh, in terms of visibility <laughs> uh, we also have our shifter here our Shimano shifter and this has about seven uh, gears which you could cycle through with just literally a twist of the twist of the um, twist of the wrist here. This uh, sort of shifter is like a nice little like easy way to shift between gears. Uh, you have your plus and minus lets you know what gear you're in. Um, really nice design by Shimano. I actually haven't seen one of these on on some of the recent bikes, but it definitely feels very very high quality um, and a lot more useful than like hitting the switches over here with your thumb or like adjusting it with like your index finger. So I do like this uh, Revo shift. Uh, feature that's over here. Uh, in terms of braking power, we have our Tektro hydraulic brakes. Tektro hydraulic brakes. Uh, we're running um, dual pistons on the front, dual pistons on the rear, with uh, 180 millimeter rotors. This bike, this frame, actually is um, high grade aluminum, so it is fairly light. Uh, it is pretty easy to carry upstairs and to kind of like transport, which uh, I didn't have any issues with if, when I was putting it in my car. In terms of suspension, this is a hardtail. It only does have front suspension, uh, but you do have a lockout here. 
uh, which you can adjust. So we are out and about on the VeloWave Ranger 2.0 step through edition. And uh, we are pedaling. I have it on, uh, currently have it on mode five right now. So uh, we're gonna see what top speed numbers we get with the uh, GPS located right here. As you can see, we're hitting a uh, considerable hill here. And it's uh, pushing at about 17 miles an hour. Not bad for going up a steep hill. I'm gonna use throttle a bit. This is a nice sized bike. I mean, the 26 inch wheels obviously uh, make it look super tall, but because the seat is adjustable, it makes it, uh, it makes it compatible for people that are, uh, you know, a little bit shorter uh, and also a little bit taller because uh, you can actually bring the seat height pretty high. So uh, I think uh, as per VeloWave, uh, they had mentioned that you could only throttle up to 20 miles an hour. So, um, it's limited in terms of uh, actually using the thumb throttle. Uh, and also another thing to talk about, the thumb throttle is on the left side. Uh, for those of you who are used to your throttle being on the right side or use like a half twist or a full twist on the right, it does get a little bit getting used to. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but otherwise it's not really a big deal, you know, for me at least. I think if it was like a twist on the left side, it would really throw me off. But, you know, like thumb throttle on the left side is not too bad. Oh, so the uh, GPS and the display are actually uh, accurate. As you can see here, my uh, GPS is slightly delayed, but it is getting the same numbers though. Ooh, all right, let's put a little bit more. All right, top speed run now. up to 27 with uh, some nice pedaling it's not bad that was a nice little speed run there so I would think somebody if they were lighter probably hit 28 weigh about 200 pounds so obviously weight and uh, certain riding conditions will affect top speed but not bad 27 miles an hour Actually, uh, I haven't ridden a step through since uh, I reviewed the Velotrick. I forget which model it was, but um, it was the step through. And I think that's the last time I rode a step through bike. And uh, one of the reasons that I was interested in the Ranger, uh, not only for the price, which was super, uh, super reasonable, but for the fact that uh, me and my wife plan on taking our son out to a lot more trails, a lot more like paths and stuff like that, like bike paths. So something like this would be like really, really perfect uh, just to kind of like put a hitch on the on the back, on the back wheel and uh, have him in like a little carriage. And uh, I always, I mentioned this before, but uh, it actually, you know, it has that cargo rack uh, extension in the back. So you can put, you know, like a crate there or like some kind of like, uh, some sort of container if you wanted to in the back and uh, do like Uber Eats or just take like, use it as like storage or stuff like that. So um, yeah, something to think about, especially if you're, you know, doing food deliveries or 
you know, you're just wanting to ride ride with the family out on the uh, on the trails. The Shimano Shifter, I like this uh, style now. I, you know, I was questioning it before why they changed it, um, but it's actually really easy to access. You can just like kind of switch gears at the flick of a wrist, pretty much. If you want to go high or low, if you want to go low, I can just hit that. And then it brings me back to my low gear. Also, another thing to note, uh, because this is a uh, single suspension on the front, I don't know if I could fully recommend this for off-road. I mean, depending on what kind of off-road you're doing, if you're doing like sort of like light gravel, or like even maybe like sand possibly, but that's about it. You really do need uh, rear suspension, uh, especially for going off-road. I think adding a, um, like a small little rear taillight. It could be like the cheapest one <laughs> you could manufacture, but just to kind of include that with the bike would be awesome. You know, especially on trails or if you're riding street like this, just for like cyclists and like cars to see you braking is is pretty, uh, pretty useful. All right, let's try the different pedal assist modes. Uh, we're gonna start with one and we're gonna mainly be pedaling. Oh boy. Zero pedal assist, <laughs> going about nine miles an hour. All right, let's switch it to two. Okay, pedal assist two. So you can bump that up to about 12 miles an hour. Woo, you do get a workout though. That's for sure. Pedal assist three. Let's go, let's go. Come on, Ranger. About 16, 16 miles an hour. Not too bad. Let's go to four. About 18, 20. Yeah, suspension is great. Darn, I tried to uh, get away with uh, this bike not being an e-bike. So one of the security guards was like, how long does the charge last? And I was like, darn, I thought this uh, bike would be incognito because it really does look incognito. It just looks like an enlarged frame. But I think he saw the display and uh, automatically saw that it was <laughs> an e-bike, which is fine. I mean, this, still, this bike still is kind of pretty stealth. You know, if you were to take it on trails and you're kind of worried about, you know, Karen's kind of like giving you a hard time or something like that. I mean, it is pretty incognito in that sense because of the uh, battery and how modular it is. It just fits right into the frame. It's actually right in here, which is really, really nice. Because that one Karen experience or that one like, you know, whatever park ranger experience can just ruin your day. So, uh, it's good to be uh, good to be a little bit uh, under the radar, especially nowadays. Man, this thing is just uh, nice, especially if you're on if you're on a bike path. Thing just cruises, super smooth. Even though the tires are a bit knobby, I don't feel like they're sort of degrading the uh, the riding style. Also, the noise that the motor makes isn't too loud. You know, you hear that like traditional like a fang sound, you know, especially when the gears uh, start running. But, um, you know, it's not nothing too crazy. It's not like a mid drive or anything like that. But it's as silent as you're going to get with a... Yikes. Goodness gracious. I didn't have time to hit my, uh, my little bell. It's just like not looking. <laughs> you're walking onto a bike bath. You got to look.
I think if you're on mode five and on the highest gear, that's like the best uh, sweet spot. Brakes feel real good too. I broke ahead of time, but at the same time, uh, those Tektros do a really good job of kind of gripping those rotors, man. All right. Woo. We are over here by the High Line. It's one of my actually uh, favorite areas to come to. Got a lot of good food here. It's a little bit pricey, but the uh, the selection of restaurants they have here are pretty nice. Let's see how it handles the speed bump, actually. I'm gonna go at full speed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not too bad. Woo. Maneuverability is really nice, too. Alrighty, guys. We are on our way back. Just went to the city actually just for a uh, work meeting. And now we are further riding the Ranger 2.0. I'm having a lot of fun with this bike actually. Smack dab in the middle of rush hour. That's always fun. But the great thing about e-bikes, you can bypass most of that traffic. I mean, unless there's like bike traffic, I guess, right? Catch up to that moped. Uh, let's go. Oh, I only caught up because he slowed down. <laughs> Look at this. Whew. That's an e-boarder's worst nightmare. <laughs> I know a lot of people are saying, you know, step through bikes are, you know, like girl bri girl bikes, <laughs> it's really not. I mean, like in terms of convenience, especially the fact that you can kind of just, you know, move your leg out like this and then move it back um, without having many issues is uh, actually pretty convenient. Especially if you're doing uh, Uber Eats, you know, having to dismount and mount your bike is, to me annoying sometimes but the step through design does make it easy for that these bmx riser bars feel nice too usually with like some kind of traditional like um mountain bike style uh bikes it's usually just the regular flat you know um flat riser bar but this actually uses that like two level bmx uh style bar which is actually pretty nice look at all that traffic we're passing Look at that. That's insane. Why, why even own a car in New York City? Man, there's so many uh, rental e-bikes in New York City, like the city bike, the uh, electric ones that you see here with like the, uh, the purple uh, headlight. Yeah, those are all rentals, man. All city bike owned. All right, guys, so it's nighttime. We've done about uh, 22 miles. Uh, overall uh, in terms of uh, work commute and we are at about 22 percent and that's because uh, I've been pretty much on mode 5 the whole time uh, highest pedal assist uh, there have been times I've just been using throttle only uh, pedaling like hell but uh, we're at about 22 percent but yeah overall guys this is a, actually a really fun bike I can see myself actually using this uh, quite often especially if I'm going to be taking my my wife and my son out on our uh, little e-bike adventures. Uh, I think this is a perfect bike for that. And um, you know, these tires I'd probably swap out, but other than that, it's it was a pretty comfortable ride. Uh, I myself, I think for like the longer rides, 
Uh, I'd probably get like a thicker maybe gel seat over here just to replace this one. But other than that, not too bad. Suspension solid. In terms of pros, uh, I probably would have to say that uh, I do like the components that they use. I think the uh, the shifter that they have, this Revo shift, is actually really, really convenient, especially when you're shifting through gears uh, mid-riding. Uh, I think this is definitely a good addition. Uh, the fact that these are hydraulic brakes and not cable brakes, love that about this bike. Uh, also another pro, I'd have to say, I do love the rear rack addition. Uh, this came standard with the bike. Uh, it wasn't an add-on, so the fact that they did include it uh, was a really nice, uh, really nice uh, added value uh, for this, this type of bike. Uh, third pro, I really like torque sensors. Before I was kind of hesitant on it, like, oh, how much assist you would get from actually pedaling, but this is actually pretty solid. You can get a good um, workout from, from just using the torque center, sensor. You could even put it at a high gear and then make, your, make it hard for yourself to pedal uh, in certain areas. But if you're looking to get a workout, I think this is uh, definitely the bike for that. In terms of cons, um, I would say um, maybe overall, like, you know, in terms of design, going back to design, it is a nicely designed bike, but I do wish that they did cover up some of these wiring a bit. It does look a little bit scrappy in the front here. Uh, and you can see here, like the, the headlight is kind of like hidden behind all these wires. So you're not really getting the sort of full, uh, full light exposure because these, these wires are in the way, as you can see here. So if they did sleeve this up a bit and kind of like tighten this organization in the front, I think it would look a lot better. Another con, uh, this is very minor too, is the throttle on the left side. Um, it didn't really bother me as much. Uh, you do kind of get used to it after, you know, riding a few miles here and there. But I do wish that it was on the right side uh, just for, you know, uh, being something that you're used to you know, having the accelerator on the left, on the right, having the shifter on the left. That's just my opinion. Uh, certain people may feel different. They may hate it on the left side and kind of switch it off. But um, I believe this Revo shift is meant to be on the right side, just in terms of how it's constructed and how it's situated. So even if you were to try and bring this over here, I mean, I guess you can kind of like put your throttle over here and then have, keep the Revo here, obviously. Just leave this one out. But, you know, in terms of throttle placement, not for everybody. Definitely can see this on trails uh, for people that are looking to bring cargo with them, take their kids and stuff like that. Um, have a trailer hitch on the back. Uh, I think this is the perfect family bike for that. Hope y'all enjoyed today's review, today's ride. I hope y'all enjoyed it as well. And if you like it, please be sure to comment, like, or even subscribe. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.